ladies and gents, welcome to War Thunder with Mags. Now I had an interesting question on one of my videos the other day from Jay Young. Now Jay Young's asked, look Mags, I'm trying to get to the Canair Sabre, do you have any advice on getting there and how to get through low level Germans? Now he didn't give me an error that he was starting at, so I'm going to assume about error 2. And, and the question's sort of a, a hard one to answer in text because there really is three things that you need to address when grinding through a tree. The first thing you need to address is how do I get to the aircraft that I'm trying to unlock most efficiently. The second thing you need to cover is what, what aircraft do I need to pick up along the way to teach me what I need to know in order to fly the Can Air Sabre, something like the Can Air Sabre, efficiently from the word go. And then the third thing is how do I fly each and every individual aircraft? Well, the third one's going to be covered, have to be covered in multiple videos. I'm going to have to show battles and different tactics to use in different aircraft. I've already covered some of it in the past. This is going to be just a cover at the start for the progression tree itself. So first things first, let's take a look. So this is the German tree as it stands. As you can see, I'm researching the Can Air now. I'm that's all I've got left to go in the German tree, the MiG-15 and the Canair Sabre. Now, getting through this tree, uh, it's got an interesting issue at around error 3. I'm going to assume you've cleared error 1, Jay. Error 2 is where we're going to start at here. Now, error 2, the obvious line to follow is down the Mischa Schmidt line, down the 109s, because that's where the Canair bolts onto at the end. So you're going to have to take this entire line, but each error is going to require six aircraft unlocks in order to be able to get access to the next one. However, there are only five air or four aircraft in the 109 line, five in the fighter line here total. So you're going to need access to other aircraft. The first one I'd recommend, pick up the MC-202. That should be well, the end of your focus for the Italian line on the end. I've flown the SM-79s, honestly, I was never really impressed with their performance, but the 202 is a damn nice aircraft. The E-Series, grab both. The E-1 is constantly an underrated aircraft, mainly because of the way its armament works. The E-3 is the one that people consider to be the good one because it gets cannons. It's sort of irrelevant that it does. The cannons that it gets are MGFFs. They're not very good. You've got to get very close to the target to make them effective, and you only get 120 rounds. When those 120 rounds run out on the E3, you have 2,000 rounds of ammunition, but only two 7.92mm machine guns in order to deliver it. That's a very, very big burst mass drop. It actually drops your burst mass to under a kilogram per second when those cannons run out from 2.5. However, if you're sitting on the E1... It doesn't get cannons, but it gets four 7.92 straight off the bat and 3,000 rounds of ammunition. This thing can spray for hours. It's huge amounts of ammunition. Now, it only has a 7.8 burst mass, but it never, ever, ever goes out. Or 0 0.78 kilogram burst mass anyway, but it never, it, it never drops because it never has that issue with the cannons running dry. So you can the endurance of this aircraft is a lot better than that of the E3. Once you've gotten through those, pick up both of the F-Series. These are effectively the F-4s, but with a worse armament. The F-1 carries a single MGFF mounted down the prop up. It's a damn nice, damn fast, damn maneuverable aircraft. It's a very good trainer for the later uh, F-4 series of 109s. The F-2 replaces that with a 15mm machine gun, an MG-151. And again, very good aircraft. With 200 rounds on that 15mm, it's not quite your 20mm cannon, but it will chew holes in things very quickly. And it is, again, a very fast, very manoeuvrable little aircraft. The other one to pick up is obviously the 190A1. And that's because when you look down the end of the line, here's where your major competitive jets are, down both the end of the Focke-Wulf and the Mischa Schmidt line. So you're going to want access to both these lines. The A1 I'm not a particular fan of. This is a new plane that was put in 1.39. It basically carries the combination armament of both the E-Series. It's got four 7.92 machine guns with 4,000 rounds, so it's got huge spraying capacity there, but it also has twin 20mm MG FFMs. 120 rounds on each of these. The problem with this aircraft is it gets 3.3 battle rating, so it will almost always exclusively find itself in Era 3 matches, and it is slow and not particularly maneuverable, and you're fighting against aircraft that are very, very nimble. It's very hard to get this one to perform. 
Now we're going to step into Era 3, and this thing's where get things get really difficult for the Germans, especially when you're progressing through. You need six aircraft in Era 3 to progress. However, you only have two fighters in the F-4s, the F-4 and the F-4 Tropical, the G-2, the A-5, and the A-5U-2. Now, all of these aircraft are worth getting, but that only gives you five. You need a sixth. Honestly, once you've gone past the 202, why the Spavero would get you your sixth aircraft, it's really something you'll find yourself not flying. It's an inferior bomber. If you wanted to go the bomber path for your sixth aircraft, I would suggest going down here and looking at the Doe 217Es. These are little beastly little aircraft. 20mm mounted on the front, MG151. Five turrets overall and carries a 2,000 kilo bomb load. They fly like the Doe 217J series. They fly like heavy fighters, but they're bomb capable and very large bomb capable. So a damn good machine there. Your alternative to follow, my suggestion would actually be to follow the ME410 line, mainly for this one at the end. Once you get into Era 4, you don't need to unlock this in order to progress down to jets. However, this is a very nice aircraft to bring out in matches with a lot of heavy bombers. The B6R3 is twin 30mm with 240 rounds of ammunition and twin 20mm with 700 rounds of ammunition. B17s hate this goddamn thing and anything less than a B17 will get chewed up by it if they're silly enough to let you go near them with this aircraft. It is a monster. But this will buy you the line you need to get through Era 3. You really only need to get to the dough and that will give you the unlock you need and you can finish this line at will. Era, five, uh, Era 4 rather is really easy. You've got multiples on multiple. You're three in the 109 line alone. G6, I've had a mixed history with this aircraft. I'm. It's not so much that it's a bad plane. It's more that I'm not very good at flying it. It has, has however, had its repair cost drop, so I should go back to that. The part of the reason why I never got around to finish the G6 myself was when I was flying it, it had like a 40,000 credit repair bill in order to bring out. That's been dropped down to about 12, so I'm going to have to give that another shot. G10, again, a good aircraft. I mainly skipped this one because I unlocked the K4 very earlier on, and this thing is a monster. This is one of my German aircraft that I've attached, pre, uh, attached talisman to. With the gun ponds on, it will still do 710, and it's got a nearly 8 kilogram burst mass. It is lethal. Take the gun pods off, and it's it, it, this thing will chase down P-51s. Down this side, you've got the A-5, or the A-8, rather, a amazing plane that was put in last patch for MG-151s. It's just a beast. The F-3, which spawns at bomber altitude and gets access to some really big underwing cannons, then you've got your D-series, your D-9s and your D-12s. I never really had great success with those, although I really haven't flown the D-9. Uh, then you come down to the TA-152, which this is an amazing aircraft to fly. I'm going to be doing a review on it sometime in the very near future. With those unlocked at whichever sequence you want, specifically the three Mischersmitch, you get access to this line where you get the Canair Sabre. Now, I actually suggest you unlock the 162 first. One, this is a jet. It will, it, and it's a very cheap jet to run. It's only 18,000 credits fully upgraded. Its handling characteristics will teach you tricks. This is one of the first jets that I ever unlocked, and it will teach you how to handle high-end jets. Basically, every good thing and every bad thing about every jet in the game is combined into this one aircraft. It is very hard to fly, so it's got a very steep learning curve, but it will teach you a lot on how to fly these end jets and give you the best sort of training you can go through for when you get behind the stick of something like the Can Air. Now, a few people are going to be saying here, why not the 163 first? Well, firstly, it's a rocket plane. You've got to get used to only six minutes worth of fuel, and it doesn't handle or maneuver anything like the endgame jets, so it's going to teach you nothing. The second thing is this thing has 52,000 credit repair bill, already and mine's stock it is stock as a rock it's only going to get more expensive this thing fully upgraded is at least 60,000 credits a pop every time you blow up why it is great fun to fly it's not something you're going to be doing if you are trying to save money for later jets once you get past it, however and get into the 262 you run into another aircraft that is extremely difficult to fly but also has a large repair cost the 262C1A, it's 
again, it's an expensive aircraft. It's 52,000 credits a pop to repair. So they're not getting any cheaper through this sequence. And the 262C1A, while it is a fun aircraft with that rocket booster, it will teach you bad habits. You'll get used to having that rocket booster available. And when you go to actual Korean era jet combat, you don't have that option. Don't learn the bad habits. These things, take them out for a fly, obviously, as you unlock them. This is the plane you really want to be training yourself in. And that eventually leads you down to the CL-13A. And if you followed the sequence right and spent your time right, you should have a pretty good idea how to operate this aircraft by the time you have it unlocked. Now, the second piece of advice I can give you for getting through this tree is patience. The Germans, they have some areas where it's really easy to dominate, really easy to blow through in a real hurry, and then they run into some real areas that are hard. High Error 4 is a challenge for German pilots, mainly because their matchmaking on some of the things like the K-4 at battle rating 6 will put you into battle against things like the F-80C. That's a 6.7 battle rating. At 6.7, you will you don't encounter them much at the moment, but in the future you will encounter F-84s. Now, these are maneuverable little jets. These things will give things like the K-4 a real, real, real hard time. You, you're going to be matched against low-end jets on a fairly regular basis. The only upside to it is, is at the moment there are a lot of 163s floating around. A lot of people are seeing this as a negative. This is actually one of the few useful things that is happening in this patch for Era 4 German props. Because it's giving us a fairly constant and reliable supply of rocket planes that tend to take precedence for jets to try and eliminate before the props do, allowing us to get a chance to get into position. Uh, without one on battles when 163s don't show up where you get placed against jets uh, things like the K4 and the 162 are still trying to get to combat altitude by the time the F-80Cs are already on you and already taking their first shots the 163s tend to delay that just a little bit also you've got to remember the RP numbers you're talking about down here these things are the 162 or the 262A1 and the 262C1 you're starting to look in the vicinity of nearly 300,000 RP a piece before you even get to the Sabre and the Sabre is 380 on top of that so you're looking at nearly well over a million RP to go from the 163 to the CL13A it's a long grind you need to be patient with it you will get discouraged from time to time it will be worth it in the end. Well, that's enough of me babbling on. How about we go take a look at some aircraft? Now, the Focke-Wulf 190A1. This is one of the first battles I ever had in this aircraft, and being as it's a new aircraft, this patch, it's also completely stock. This was also possibly the only battle I ever had in this plane where my opponents were in the same era as I was. These are mostly era 2 Russian fighters. Now I've been lurking above the clouds for around 10 minutes trying to locate high altitudes. There was nothing there, so I've dove down straight over the top of A and I've come across an IL-2 and a Yak-1. Who to go for first? Well I chose to go for the Yak-1. The reason is, in stock format, this thing will outrun an IL-2. But the Yak-1, if it's upgraded, will keep up, and with its ridiculously high maneuverability, the Yak-1, once it's on my tail, will be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to dislodge. So it's actually the most dangerous of the two aircraft down there. If it gets on my tail, I'll never get rid of it. Thankfully, he seems to be a little bit zeroed out at the moment. He hasn't realised I'm there, he makes no attempts to manoeuvre, which gives me just the right amount of time to pull in and put a burst into him quick turn and get a, another hit. I'm going a little bit too fast, I'm cooking it a little. Take it straight into the vertical. Roll into split S. And reinitiate the dive. Now he's going in to try and land here. I wanted to make sure the kill was secured, he didn't make a successful landing, so put in a final burst just to smash his landing gear and then pull away. There's no way he can land now. The second he puts those wheels down, there it is. Now so far I've found the 190A1 to be one of the most difficult Fokker Wolves to fly and this is because what it faces. At Era 2 almost everything is a maneuverability based fighter. They're all turn fighters or very close to it. There are very few 
true boom and zoom aircraft and those few that are there are also very good at turning. The A1 is not. Now, because just about every fighter you face will have an advantage in regards to maneuverability, you have to fly this aircraft from a superior energy standpoint in boom and zoom exclusively. If you engage in a turn fight against any fighter at this level, they will simply in turn inside of you and kill you. There's the, the 190 is incapable of making the turns that planes at this level are capable of doing, especially some of the low-end Russian planes. Things like that Yak-1 has almost half the turn time of a 190. They will, in a single death spiral, they will get inside you before you complete one single turn. And this is exactly why I spent the first half of this match at above 10,000 feet, just trying to maintain an energy advantage. However, you don't need much of one. Now with the Yak-1 eliminated, I've got the IL-2 left to go, and it's going to be my next target. So I begin my dive, turn down to get a deflection shot, first shot goes in, immediately boom out the other side, take it straight back to altitude, into a split S, roll out, reinitiate the dive. Now, I was hoping to be able to get there before it could kill that uh, Doe 217, but there was no chance of me getting there on time. However, he's lining up ground targets to attack, which gives me a perfect shot. Rip into the tail, light him on fire, and he smacks himself into the ground. Second kill of the match. Immediately boom out the other side and go for altitude. And I begin a turn around to head towards that Yak-9K in the distance, but while you can only see one fighter at the moment, there are actually three 109s on him, and he's just got no chance. He's just about to get slaughtered. I think these were actually my first two kills in the A1 as well. So a short but sweet battle section to show you. That was two kills and I got one assist on an AI while cleaning up the end of the match. 41,665 silver lines, 2,101 mod research points which is enough to unlock me the 7.7mm belts and 1,587 aircraft research points, but that was only at a 66% because I'm using an Era 2 aircraft to research a Era 5 jet. So, apologies for the short battle on this one. I spent a little bit too much time covering how you should progress through the German tree, but rest assured, most of the aircraft that I listed off in that will be coming in the near future. I'm planning on doing a playthrough through most of the German aircraft in their lines and through all the nations in sequence. And that's the new Focke-Wulf 190A1. It's, it's not a bad plane. It does have the issue of having to fight aircraft that are vastly more maneuverable than it. But I suppose the upside of that is, it, in a later game, boom and zoom tactics, hit and runs, they're the bread and butter of air combat. This aircraft will force you to learn, at a very low level, at Era 2, how to perform in one of those aircraft straight out of the bat where a lot of other nations won't get true boom and zoomers until era 3 and in some cases era 4s. So anyway, Jay Young, I hope this helped answer your question. There will be more low level German aircraft coming in the near future. Until next time, click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.